If you want a boat with a walk-through transom and a sugar scoop and an aft cabin that's small enough to sail by yourself on small lakes, but big enough to sleep on for all of about 10 grand, you wouldn't have much to choose from. But there is one, and I got on board with a camera the other day. Check this out. The perfect family sailboat doesn't really exist because every boat, as we know, is a compromise. But this boat does just about everything a small family might need very, very well. It's small, so you can sail it by yourself or with your kid. It's also a shallow draft and short enough to keep the marina costs way down with a total length of 26 and a half feet. She'll fit just about anywhere there's a dock to tie her to. Draft is just shy of four feet, so the Florida Keys or inland waterways, no problem. This is the Hunter 272, and it's a lot of boat for a very, very reasonable price a small family might actually be able to afford. These usually go for between 10 and 15 grand on the used market, and I've personally brokered the sale of three of them, test sailed them, and one of the local ones to me, I've raced on it multiple times and against it. What I found racing is, however, that in the small boat series of 27 feet or less, it decimates the competition. A CNC 25 gave us a good run, but ultimately we pointed higher and he couldn't catch us. But if you race it against the big boats, it just can't keep up. It's somewhere in its own middle class anyway. This is the $10,000 Hunter 272. They made these from 1989 to the mid 90s, and the one here today is the first year for this boat. At 5,000 pounds, it's light and agile, but more importantly, towable. A lot of these came with a trailer and you'd be fine towing it behind your three quarter ton. Depending on the weight of your trailer, you might even be okay with a half ton F-150 too. Now that can be said for some 27 footers, but here's what makes this boat so special. Hunter does what they do well with this boat. They give you big fancy boat stuff for small boat money. This has a walk through transom and a scoop to swim off of on a 27 foot boat, which is almost unheard of. It's got a roller furling on the fractional rig, so the jib is small and easy to deploy or wrap back up to keep you safe in a sudden blow. We note the huge port lights and fairly large cockpit made for the small family to be comfortable and relatively safe when they're enjoying this boat. We get wheel steering so the kids won't have to learn that the rudder always steers backwards to what they expect to happen. The glasswork on this boat, despite it being from 1989, is all in great shape and well laid. No delamination or water intrusion anywhere. The main sheet is on a bridle system, which is not ideal for racing, but that's not what this boat's for. It's a sailing appliance more than a boat with a lot of character. And I wanna stop here for a second. Hunter gets a bad rap for some delamination issues in the mid to late 90s, of which this boat is excluded. But Hunter always gets the short end of the stick, and these are my thoughts, because they give you so much big boat luxury for half the price, people get jealous, and that's to be expected when you have a sugar scoop and an aft cabin on your 27 footer, while the guy next to you on the 25 CNC bangs his head on the coach top again. Hunter just does very, very well at accommodation and ease of use. It's a sailing appliance. It's not meant to cross the ocean or trample on an Olsen 30 around the marks. It's designed specifically to make your kids smile, to swim off the back at the local swimming hole, to barbecue hot dogs, sip a cold one with the fam jam, and then sail at home and stick it back in the slip at the end of the day, ready for the next long weekend. That's its job and it's very, very good at it. That's why people love these things and they sell so well. Back to the boat. Headed up the side deck, we get single lifelines, a long jib track, I did mention that these point very well, and handholds of teak. The mast, of course, is deck stepped because this boat was also designed to be trailerable. For a 27, we do get enough room to move around up here, but a double lifeline would have been appreciated. And of course, because part of this boat's day is meant to be at the swim hole, we get a small locker to stow an anchor in. No roller, but alas, we won't need a very big anchor anyway for day anchoring in the nicer weather that this boat's supposed to be in. This is all very adequate. Up front, we have the roller and a light duty bow rail. Headed back, the chain plates are well inboard to assure our jib sheet lead angle is tight into the ship, and we have a clean walkway outboard to get back to the cockpit. Though everything being led aft, it'll just be the kids running up here anyway. The mast comes in under 40 feet, so if you're on the east coast or ICW, 
bridges shouldn't really be a problem, and the single spreader rig is extremely simple. You won't need to be a pro to rig this boat if you do decide to trailer it. I love to see a stack pack on here, but the conventional main cover will do. A personal note about these boats though, because I've raced on them, the power of the fractional rig is heavily biased toward the mainsail. It's huge compared to the jib, so if you're going to be out there trying to have any kind of performance, you need to put the main up, which is the harder sail to put up and take down. On leisure sails on bigger boats, we often just roll the jib out and call it a day, but on this boat, you really do need to put that main up to get her moving. A big negative on these tiny jib boats for me. Everything is led aft to the coach top clutches and we get a set of Lumar self tailors on the gunnels for sheet work. These boats do have a split backstay so having a bimini is a bit tricky but this owner figured out a way to make it work. And yes, we note the engine controls which means we get an inboard on this 27 footer. Headed inside is where Hunter always shines, exceptional use of space. We get a main saloon with seating around three sides of a flip up leaf table. So when it's lunchtime, the kids will all have somewhere to sit out of the sun and be contained safely in the boat. Turning aft, we get a small galley leading to an aft bed. On a 27 footer, an aft bed, how rare is this? Parents will have room to sleep here, be a bit more comfortable than conventional camping with two port lights, one which opens up to the cockpit. It's hard to get in and out of here, but this is an RV style camping bed on a vessel that actually moves around powered by the wind. So I'd take this over an RV any day. Back through the galley, we head to the V-berth, which is not hidden behind a bulkhead at all. It's open concept here and the cushions are very nice. This is a comfortable place to be and feels genuinely like a nice camper. Storage under is good and it feels bigger than it actually is in here thanks to all the huge port lights, many of them opening. It's very open and airy and this boat particularly smells very nice inside. It smells like sea air and isn't even remotely stuffy. There's also no holding tank smell at all. Headed aft we get a small nav area and some switch gear before we get to the head. An enclosed head on a 27. I wish I had these when I was a kid. I hated the porta potty on my dad's 26 footer. This head actually feels very spacious, very long and deep into the boat with a shower. It is wet in here after a shower, but the seat folds down over the Jabsco so you can sit or stand with the shower running. And yes, this has hot and cold running water. It's electric heat only with no exchanger fitted, but it's there if you're at the dock or you could heat it up before you head out for a sail and it should still be warm to rinse off after a swim. And then what makes this boat even more family friendly? We get an inboard Yanmar in here. No smoke and noise machine hanging off a bracket on the transom where the kids are gonna trip over it. Everything's contained in a well insulated box in the spirit of easy family sailing. You hit the key and she starts just like the family SUV you used to haul the kids with. It's clean and quiet and out of the way. Just remember to check the oil before you use it. What I love most about these 272s is they're just easy. They're designed easy, easy to use, easy to sail. You can take a new sailing young family and put them on this boat and they'll all come back with a big smile on their face, which is what sailing's supposed to do. Not everyone needs a 30,000 pound battleship capable of being out in a typhoon. Some small families just want to enjoy the sport and leisure of it all and then stick the boat back on the trailer until they need it again. And Hunter does that in spades. I've never had cause to open this transom before, but I figured it out within a few seconds. I've only ever raced on or against this boat. Let me hear from you Hunter owners in the comments. What do you love about your boat? What would you change? And if you don't have a Hunter, let me hear from you too. Why not a Hunter? I don't have one because I haven't found one that's fast enough yet, but I can't wait to see your comments.